Hi, I'm Gary Jenkins, and welcome back to the Jenkins Art Studio. Today, we're going to paint my favorite flower, the old-fashioned rose. But today, it's going to be a little different. We're going to paint it on a black background, and I'm going to just make it up. I haven't painted this one beforehand. Usually, I'll paint one beforehand, and you'll see me looking to the side, and that's how I refer to the painting uh, that I'm doing. So, But I haven't made one up. <laughs> but I'm going to show you the process, what you think about when you make up a painting. So let me show you the canvas we're working on first. This is a 16 by 20. It's already painted black. It has black acrylic on it. And I've also put a transparent medium on here. You can't see it, but it, it's on there. Now let me show you the photograph that I have chosen to, the, to work from and use as a reference guide. Now you guys at home, you know, you have your photos. And don't look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to use this as our reference. We'll change it. You see the leaves in the background. Now we are certainly can't put all those leaves in. It would be too busy. So we use bits and parts of a photograph. There's a little bud on the top. No photograph perfect, guys. <laughs> so we're going to take bits and pieces from this. We might, I have another photograph that I have. We might, uh, take a little piece out of this one. Sometimes I just take photographs of leaves to use in paintings. So these are the old-fashioned roses. These are the roses with all those petals inside. Let me show you another one. Now this one was a regular photograph, but I blew it up <laughs> on my computer. And this is an enlargement. You see the rose on the top, which is a great side view. Look at the uh, subtle pinks and the one on the bottom. So, and this one has some really neat sort of leaf work over in here. Again, I take water out in my backyard and I'll sprinkle water on leaves to get dew drops. I don't, maybe we'll have time to do a dew drop. We'll, we'll see. Normally I don't, I'm rushing at the end to get finished. Let's find out where our roses are. Now, when you have your photo, you should probably tape your photo up. I don't have any tape here to tape it up, but maybe I can. No, I can't stick it. I'll just stick it down here in the easel. But keep it close by so you can refer to it. I also use paper towels all the time. Now we're going to come down here and we're going to pick up... Oh, look at that. We got... <laughs> we have a little visitor. We have my... A little butterfly just came in and said, I'm going to visit the Jenkins Art Studio. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this is a great idea for you guys that want to put butterflies in your paintings that you can go to the um, craft store and buy these, these little sil uh, silk butterflies and use them as a model to uh, put in your painting. They're really great. They won't fly away and they don't move. <laughs> and they're really great. They have a lot of nice detail. Now let's come down and pick up. Oh, we have a little crimson and white. Now let me tell you, you see these little piles of paint out here. This uh, on the outside, that's the tube paint. These are the colors right out of the tube. And the colors inside are the colors I've mixed. I've taken white and mixed it with each one of these colors to get these real, real nice pastel shades. So we'll take a little bit of, of this crimson and come up here. We're going to have one rose probably right about in here. Now, I haven't painted this one before, so we're just going to guess our way through it just like you would. We're going to work from our photo. Now, with our photograph, you can see that the side view here, this, this, this rose is too much on the same level. So what I'm going to do is sketch this one down a little bit lower. So this one's going to sit down here. This is what we have. We have to make, this, make our own composition up. Not everything is perfect. So I just drop this one down lower. Okay. Now we're going to come in. Oh, let's put some color in the background. We're going to come down. Maybe I'll pick up a nice big background brush. This is a number 32. We'll come down here. And let's see. Boy, we got everything down here. We'll take a little mauve, a little touch of white. And we'll put some of that back here. Oh, boy. And you crisscross. Look at that color. Go on. <laughs> let's go to get some more mauve uh, right out of the tube mauve. Maybe that's a little too light. Yeah, there it is. And on it goes, and you crisscross it. Remember, I have that transparent medium on the back. The back, the black ground is black acrylic. I'm using oil, and on it goes. I love mauve, so you'll see, or purple, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. That's a wonderful color. 
We're going to use a, a little blue and white combination. Maybe we'll get a little of that. Yeah, that's beautiful. This color combination is great. Because look at this. We can take it and don't just leave it sitting there. For some reason, a lot of folks are afraid to mix one color into the other. And as it comes out, just remember, we have that transparent medium. So it's blending. Now, if we out. Now, if we had a white canvas, we would probably have white paint back there so that it would blend out into the white paint. It's very simple once you learn the different steps to go through. It's no biggie. And I'm going to blend and blend and blend. Boy, that, look at that. Look at that color shine. <laughs> We're going to take a little more of that white and go right into that shiny area and kaboom! And we're going to sort of blend that out. So we have a nice little bright spot hitting right in that area. We'll take our blending brush. Now our leaves will come on top of that in a little bit to soften that out. Now again, we're going through the process of putting together a painting. I haven't done this before. We're just sort of making it up as we go along. <laughs> just as you guys would do at home. Now our photograph. Remember, when I showed you the photo, it was full of leaves. So we can't, we'll look at our photo and we'll say, okay, what do we have in there that's kind of neat? Well, I see a shape right in here that's hidden in all the leaves. I see some leaves coming up in here. I see that these are sort of a little bit elongated. So we're going to start down here. I'll pick a leaf out and I'll put this down and bring a nice leaf up. Maybe that's a little light. Take a little more of that sap green and sienna. And put it in. Now you see how it's going right in front of that light spot. So we're setting that bright spot back. Couldn't leave that spot by itself. It'd be too distracting. But now we just put that, see the glow? We just put the glow behind the leaves. Another one up here. Uh-huh. So when we do our paintings, we want to have a nice dramatic look to the painting. We want it to look like there's things going on. We want movement to the painting. We don't want a bunch of this static stuff. Let's get some movement. Let's not be a mechanic out there. Okay, well you learned how to do the painting, how to do florals. You went and took some classes. Maybe some of you are even certified. And what happens? You're a bunch of mechanics. Oh yes, you know how to do the leaf, and you do the leaf so mechanically and it's all so tight. That's not where it's at, guys. All you're doing is being a mechanic then. Let's get some creativity. Let's have some fun. Maybe we have a leaf over here. Yes. Maybe that one has a little crimson mixed in with it over here. Let's put a little more, a little red in it. Go on on the other side and get something going on over here. Maybe some of those little wiggles. Who knows? I'm making this up as I go along. Way up on the top, we'll take some more sienna and green. And come on up and we'll put a nice thin thing you can't see behind my hand. I should have a mirror back there so you can see back there. <laughs> Let me push this brush down. And there's a leaf. There. There. Look at the height. We're reaching for the stars and we've got that little bit of light. Yes. Let's put some roses in. We have a wonderful pink rose. I love roses. Let's start. Why don't we start, for all you guys that love to paint roses as I do, let's start a rose society. Of all you guys that love to paint roses, and you know I love roses. Start, let's start a rose society. So on the next, and I want you guys that paint roses to send me photographs of your paintings. And the next series I do, I want to show everybody the paintings that you do. Okay? Make sure you get them in the mail. As soon as you see this show, get them in the mail to me and send them to me and I'll show them on the air. But I want you guys, everybody that loves them, get them on into me. Because I want to I want to show everybody out there that yeah, there's, a, there's people out there that love rose painting. <clears throat> Watch this, I won't get any paintings. <laughs> no, you send me those, send me those photos so I can show them. We will start a rose society. Here's a, a color going in. I don't even know what it color it is. I just reached down and picked up some crimson. Now there is going to be a little bit lighter side. You can't, that's very dark. I know that's very inside. 
And we're gonna take some, some, a little bit of red over here, maybe a little bit of this little mauve color and paint in the lighter side. Cause you have the dark inside of the rose and we have the outside that's Send me those photos before I do my next series. Because I want to start, let's start a rose society. Yes. Because we have societies of folks out there that grow roses. They have their society. And they're wonderful. Let's start our own rose society. Now this is blocked in. Look how you see how I kept the inside dark and the outside light. And now we're going to go from that one. Look at that, how it looks like a rose, and we haven't done anything but just block that sucker in there. Let's go down to the next one. This is more on the pink side. Okay, well, let's find a nice pink. Here's a color that's called rose. Rose. And we'll block the inside of this one in. Yes. Keep it dark. Rose color. Actually, rose looks darker because on this black background, than it does on the palette, which is cool, that's all right. And then up in here, we're gonna take rose and a touch of white, and we're gonna use that in here, block it. And a lot of folks say, okay, well, where do you go to get your inspiration from? Well, you know, Catherine and I, we moved to Ashland, Oregon. And we, we have a place in town that every Tuesday, <laughs> they have what they call a farmer's market and where they bring uh, these people that, uh, there we are, they, they bring everything there. They, they have flowers, we have potters doing pots, uh, we have canvas painters, we have uh, guys and gals that do stained glass windows, uh, they have fruit and vegetables, uh, and of course, roses, our, our greatest love, and uh, there we are. You know, we use all our senses. We just can't, I can't just look at a rose. I have to smell it and I have to feel it. I'm just like a child. Let me smell the thing and feel the thing. <laughs> look at this. There's the inside. There's the outside. Now we're going to go over to this fellow. That's way over here. And let's see what we can do about picking out some petals. Now I'm going to pick up some rose and a touch of white. <clears throat> and we're going to come up here. Now, you can put a sketch in if you want, showing where these petals are, mm -hmm, like this, see? Uh -huh. Then you find a little vanishing point, and all your strokes will head towards that one point. Oh, yes. And we might have another one up here overlapping the center. Maybe uh, this one we'll bring over the top of that one. This is what we call the middle tone. This is just a little more, I just reach for a little more rose matter and white. Maybe we'll bring our brush straight down. And maybe we have this, this petal curved over, see? Just curved over a bit. No highlighting. We're just in the middle tone. This is just a little rose and white. Up there, a little in there. <laughs> I'm excited about that rose society. Let's get it going. Send me those photos. Here's the back petals going in. Yes. And a little more rose and white. And we have another big pedal and overlap your strokes. Uh-huh. And there's another one going in. This is just the middle tone. And let's get inside. And let's start putting in our inside pedals in here. Now these are shorter strokes. Mm -hmm. This is our 18th series. Oh, I tell you. Over the last 16 years on TV, we've done 16 of these series. Woo! Not a lot of them. Now inside, we want to keep this a little bit darker. Maybe I'll just take the straight rose color. Because I want, I, well, that's still a little too light. Let's take our crimson and mix it with the rose. The crimson is a, dark, a, a darker red. There we go. And sort of knock it down. So you're just able, just barely able to see something in there. And maybe the, a side. See how we use the side of the brush? To, to indicate, maybe there'll be a little light back here, indicate four shortened petals way in the back. And we can come down and kind of put a little tip on it, see it, twink, maybe another little twink. <laughs> and a little more white and pink. Let's put some sunshine in here. Maybe the light is hitting in there. And the light might be hitting in here, yes because it was a little flat before. And this will add the sunshine. 
So we get a feeling of light coming down from that bright spot that we first put on there. A couple little foreshortened edges in here. And now she's coming alive. Yes. Watch, you notice the stroke, how energetic the stroke is. It's the brush is down and we, we curve it. And you throw it in and you get some energy in it. You can do it. You beginners out there, boy, I know roses are tough. It's a challenge, I know. But if you're going to do something, you're going to spend your time learning something, let's go for the gusto. Let's do something worthwhile. A little light spilling around. Let's do the next one. This one here is probably in a lot fuller light than the other one. It seems to be, if we looked at our photo, remember we refer to our photo, we can see that the light is really catching over here pretty good. So maybe we'll try to get that a little bit lighter over there. That means more white. And we'll catch that light coming in. There's a petal coming way in there. Yes. And you see the little, little bit of areas that are a little bit lighter? Leave that. Don't blend it out. It adds a little texture to the petal. Yes. Now we have some light hitting. Let's get more texture. Boom, boom. Pile that in there. Yes, because petals, rose petals, have texture. Here I'm taking some rose color because I'm going to go a little darker down here, a little darker, a little bit. Now inside, it's not quite as light, see it? Because it's out of the light, and it's in what we call the middle tone. Yeah. How are we doing? Yes. Now that light, I'm taking up a little more white, would probably spill around it might catch a little spot here, a little spot there, here, here, yes. So the light dances. Let's come up to that other rose. So we work them both together. I want a little bit more light. Yes, yes, yes. And no medium. So it sticks. Sticks to those petals. Yes, you see? You see how easy it is once you learn it. Yes, there's another petal coming. I want light hitting up here. Give me light. Yes. Yes. My kingdom for some light. We have nothing until we get this dramatic look to it. We have nothing until the very end, until we start throwing these lights in there. We have nothing if you're just doing the mechanical part of it. Yes, you have to learn the mechanical part. Yes, you have to learn how to handle your brush properly. But that doesn't make you a painter. That makes you a mechanic. The creativity comes into it after you've learned how to handle your brush. And where do you learn all this creative part? It starts with a photograph. Get out in your garden and photograph and study. Sit in your living room. Turn the TV off. <laughs> Look at the photo and study it. And marvel at the beauty that's inside of this photo. Take a pencil and sketch and draw until you know that rose inside now. So that when it comes time to come up here to paint, you're not worrying about how to do it. You're not worrying about the mechanical part of it. You're just having fun and being creative. You cannot be creative if you're constantly thinking about, oh, how do I do this? Oh, how do I do that? Oh, is it going to turn out? And the attitude when you paint must be one of who cares. I've had many a, a person in my workshop when they do a painting and I'll come over and say, uh oh, well, that's not working. Why don't we wipe that off? And they almost, they almost, their eyes tear up like, oh boy, you mean I have to, I have to take it off? Oh, I must be a loser. No, you're not a loser. Take it off. Let's start again. Because it's faster to start over than to try to repair what you have. We're just putting some more leaves in. Remember, the background is just as important as anything else. Of course, this time we have a nice back black background and we have to make sure that we have enough color out here because we want to show some color on the leaves and don't forget my web address is going to be on the end if you have any questions about the photos that you're going to send in just email me I'll get back to you and if you want some information about what you should send but just send me your best photos. Take your best shot. <laughs> and if they're great photos, I'll use them on the air. 
And with your permission, if they're really great photos, maybe I'll use part of them in a painting. Sure. Yes. And if you send me your photos, send me uh, something written on there that gives me permission to use them on the air. That'd be, save us some time. There's a little. Look at the color in there. Look at this. Yes. Every good painting has a little blue in it. Whether you're doing landscapes, portraits, whatever, it doesn't matter. It should have a little cool note in there. We're going to take, and where would I put it? We might put a little of it right here. It's the only, look at that. Look at that cool color. And a little boing, 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 a little boing. Look at that. We turn the lights on. <laughs> if it gets too hard and too garish for you, we have our blending brush, which you can tone down. Okay. Now let's come on up. And maybe we can pick up a little red and way up at the top, because in our photograph, I see a little bud up here. So we're going to come up. This is a wonderful bud. And when you're out in the garden, take photos of just buds so that you'll have a lot of buds to refer to. Now, I notice this stem. This is really weird. Let's take a look at this stem. I'll stay up here. Come on in here and look at this stem on that bud on the top. Can you see how it's twisting? It's not straight, is it? Can you see how it turns? You see it? It's not a straight. So, so many folks put in their stems and they're just straight. Let's see if we can get that little curve in there. I, I, see, this is why photos are great. You need photos, because nature will guide you through the painting. Now come up here. Maybe we'll put a little yellow with it. And come up and twist it this way and that way. Yes. And then right on the end, we'll take some crimson and put a little red round belly, a little red. And don't forget on the end of the show to refer to the show number when you're talking to us, because a lot of you call up and say, well, we were watching you paint. We were watching you paint uh, flowers. And we do so many, we don't know which ones. So there will be a show number for you to refer to. And we, let's get some color on there. Look at the color. Of course, our painting packet will have all kinds of information in it for you, too. And let's get some clothes on here. Flat and turn. Yes, look at that stem just cooking. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster. A little green up here. And a little there. Look at that. Do you see the movement? You see the rhythm? Yes. Let's put another one. Do we have time? I don't know. Maybe we'll get half a bud in. And... Oh, let's come down to the bottom. Why should buds just be on the top? <laughs> let's have a bud coming out of the bottom. Here. And we'll put a little red on there. Uh -huh. And we'll have a little greenery. On there. You see it? We have a little bud coming off the bottom. You don't have to have all your buds on the top. Boring. Maybe over here. Look at that red coming in again. We're repeating the flower color down into our leaves. And we have, if we back up, we'll see that we have a wonderful S curve throughout the whole painting. Well, there you are. I think this turned out pretty good. Yeah, got nice color in there. Uh, the roses are looking sharp. Don't forget, send me those photographs so I can use them on the next series. Thanks for watching out there. And again, don't forget to stop and smell those roses along the way. God be with you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Wilt u ook leren schilderen als Gary Jenkins? Bestel dan dit prachtige boek vol met praktische schildertips en schitterende voorbeelden. Deze unieke uitgave heeft u al in huis voor 34,50 euro. Ook kunt u voor dezelfde prijs een DVD bestellen waarop Gary stap voor stap uitlegt hoe u zijn schildertechnieken kunt leren. Kijk voor alle bestelinformatie op omroepmax.nl of teletekstpagina 322.